This is a time we're going to combine on the same package a 32 nanometer Westmere CPU and a 45 nanometer graphics and chipset. And the question would be why would you put two of these together? There are many benefits. One, to really talk about, you talk about turbo. It's all about managing the thermal. Imagine that you could do turbo between the CPU and the graphics, and you could see that sometime one thing is operating at full steam, and the other time the other one is operating at full steam. This is going to give us great opportunities to get the best of the graphics and the best of the CPU. We're going to move on, and on 32 nanometer, we're going to have a second generation top. This one we're going to move monolithic, we're going to improve significantly all the parameters you could think about, from CPU to graphics to adding new instructions and to way better manage. And this is an example of the functionality you already see on extremely early uh, material of Sandy Bridge just getting out of our factories into the labs to the demand. So we expect great new cool products coming out from the Intel in the same boring year after year coming out new technologies. This is all to create these extremely fashionable, nice looking devices. But doing silicon and microprocessors is not sufficient to deliver this fashionable, cool looking things. There's a lot of other technologies that are developed in our lab to help our OEM customers and the developers to go do the coolest, nicest looking things. We are doing computational fluid dynamic simulations of the boxes. And it's all about thermals. We only talked about the fact that you could do turbo. The turbo is very much dependent how good the thermal design of the platform is. The better it is, the better the turbo could get. And you could see over here comparison that we did in our lab. Using the Core i7, we could get at 45 watts to a higher performance, we could get on a previous generation but for Xeon products just a year or two earlier. There are many other things we do. We reduce the size of the packages, we reduce the power of the devices, going from 45 watts to 35 watts, going to 25 watts. We're going to go from three packages to two packages when we go to Allendale, and we're going to have great looking products. It's amazing what you can do when you have an extremely low power. Performance is built in very much into this technology as well. We put a lot of integration, a lot of new components, better graphics, and using a leading edge 45 nanometer. So I'd like Cameron to show up and show with me again uh, the performance that we can get compared to other architectures using this technology. So what we have here is our, is our Morsetown platform, we call our, our Brentwood Bay, it's our development platform. And we just want to show you the difference in performance between a, one of the, the best-selling handhelds out on the market today, best performing. And as you can see, if you look up, Morsetown is actually playing pretty well. These are both playing a 480p clip, the exact same clip on both devices. And, and the handheld is actually, is actually struggling through it. Pretty incredible performance um, that you'll be seeing when, when it's released next year. It's going to have 10 gigabit per second being transferred on an optical wire, and it could go all the way up to 100 meters, and it could be multiple protocols from high definition display, LAN, storage, and all being done on one small tiny cable. Many years from now, and we all know that legacy takes a long time to make a transition, we hope that this one single cable is going to replace these many cables that we currently use today. And I have a very light notebook by carrying a huge amount of cables together with me all the time. So over here, talking without seeing is not believing, I have here a demo platform, but unfortunately I don't see where is the display. Over here, got it. Okay, so, so let's follow <laughs> the wire. Okay, here you are. So basically what we're, what we're doing is a new high-speed um, optical I.O. As you said, it, it's 
10 gigabit throughput, pretty incredible performance. Um, here we have about 30 or 40 feet between. You can actually go up to about 100 meters in length and send your, your, your HD display over. It can do your LAN as well as uh, your storage. Last year, uh, Jeffrey so mentioned Shrek's Law. Well, to remind you, Shrek's Law is uh, Jeffrey's way of, of uh, communicating that every iteration of the Shrek franchise, the amount of compute power that we require to meet the creative appetite doubles. Yeah. Well, our creatives are still pushing the envelope. <laughs> All right, well, so why don't, you, why don't we move into you showing us where you guys are going? Sure, well, you may, um, you may remember that in Shrek 1 there was a dragon. Yep. Um, beautiful I think we're going to show the dragon yeah. so people can so, the dragon from Shrek. The little dragon. Uh, in our next movie coming out next year, How to Train Your Dragon, uh, the dragons are not just supporting characters, they're actually the, some of the main stars of the movie. I and indeed, a picture of one of that's right. Indeed, in some of the scenes, there are more than a thousand dragons um, uh, performing at the same time. These dragons are different than the Shrek dragon. They're different, yes. I mean, as, uh, following Shrek's law, our, uh, our creators really uh, want these dragons to uh, uh, be central characters, to emote, to bond with the other characters in the scene. So the complexity of their animation is, is, is pretty astounding. Uh, almost four times the amount of uh, animation controls are needed to actually get the performances out of these, out of these dragons. So I think we've so got I think a... We're going to show that this yeah. is an animator's workstation. So as you mentioned, we, we, we really uh, use uh, Intel tools and Intel platforms across the full spectrum of production. What you see here is really the animator's view. So this is a workstation-based uh, workflow with individual animator where we lose the lighting, we lose the surfacing, and what's left is really the behavior. And a dragon like this has more than 4,000 controls for the animator to use to essentially craft the performance. And you can sort of see some of those controls along the wings uh, uh, getting that behavior. And obviously that's a, that's a pretty steep compute load and we'd love to be able to actually put more, more effects and more context, more environment into that workstation setting so the animator can, uh, can produce a performance of greater sensitivity. So uh, I think you're going to let us meet some of your dragons, aren't you? That, that's right. I mean, sneak peek? A sneak peek of uh, uh, some of the uh, creative output and what that sort of animation can produce. From How to Train a Dragon? I'm How to Train a Dragon. First Welcome to Dragon Train. Ashton, you're off. Lesson one, the deadly nada. Fast, dangerous. But if you can stay in its blind spot, you will be safe. Once he sees you, <laughs> not so much. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, you know, um, we're really excited to be a part of the Mobile Food, food Project. Thank uh, you. In fact, so much so that I'm proud to announce that we're going to factory install Mobile 2.0 on Mini 10 Ds, and I have my perfect uh, favorite color edition here that I'm showing today. Uh, but it comes in multiple colors. Uh, and tomorrow, September 24th, my son's birthday, will be the first day that Mobile will be available on a Mini 10 D exclusively at Dell.com. So please, all developers, take a chance and go and see that on the website, and please purchase a unit. So, that's the job. <laughs> Renee! <laughs> First OEM. You are the first. Available. Yes, you are the first. Congratulations. Well, let me tell you, we've, we understand the, the community and we have been working for years with the community to really develop a stable platform to make sure and ensure hardware software compatibility works well. So we invest a lot of time and effort in the testing of this unit and we think we'll develop, have a stable platform for developers to begin application development. And I'd like to also say that Dell is a strong supporter of the Intel app, app, application development program. Yes, thank you. Um, it, it's a great initiative, a great effort. We think it will add significant uh, opportunities for developers to really kind of share their creativity on the platform, creativity in, in, in the framework, and also more importantly, to add significant value to consumers. And, and that's what, after all, what we're really looking for is a value proposition to the consumer. So I, we, we, Mark and I, cannot wait to see what you all are going to come up with here as we, as we embark upon this journey. And I encourage you, go downstairs in the Dell booth. We've got many, many units running, lots more different colors, and take a look at it. And make sure Dell.com tomorrow exclusively. <laughs>